the draft lottery is in. We know which team is picking at which spot. So let's give you a recap of what happened last night. So the two worst teams in the league, the Houston Rockets and the Detroit Pistons, basically switched places. The Detroit Pistons will get the first pick. This is their first pick since 1971, since they picked Bob Lanier. And Bob Lanier averaged 23 and 12 for the Detroit Pistons. So obviously that was a good pick. Hopefully Kay Cunningham will be their next good pick. The Toronto Raptors jumped in the lottery all the way up to the fourth pick. And the Magic and Thunder got kicked out of the top four. The Minnesota loses their pick, but it might be ingenious considering now they have all their rights to their 2022 pick. And the Warriors are just going to trade their picks anyway. Cleveland moves up to top three. Much needed as they've been consistently mediocre since LeBron left. Alright, so let's get straight into it, man. The first pick is the most obvious selection on this whole draft board. The Detroit Pistons will take, and I stand by this, Cade Cunningham. This is just like Trevor Lawrence was for the Jaguars. He is the bona fide number one pick. Nobody else is getting picked number one. Cade Cunningham to the Detroit Pistons. He's a 6'7", two-way facilitating point guard with a 40% three-point shot and amazing passing vision. He will bring a lot to the city of Detroit. And at pick number two, the Houston Rockets select big man Evan Mobley. Houston needs some front court production. Kelly Olynyk won't cut it, and he won't be there long term. Don't draft a guard because KPJ's potential is there, and Wall's massive contract won't be gone for another couple of years. Now, I think they should take the front court player because Evan Mobley has a whole lot of potential. He shot okay from three. He can switch on the guards. He's very athletic. His ceiling is unknown. He can be amazing, and uh, that's what you want when you're a rebuilding team. And at pick number three, the Cleveland Cavaliers should select Jalen Green, guard out of the G League Ignite. This man in the G League Ignite bubble averaged 18 points and four rebounds. This man has the potential to be the best player in the draft, great scoring potential with a capable three-point shot, and he has two-way potential too. Jalen Green is going to the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Cavs look like they might have to get off of Sexton, but it's for the better. As Sexton, he's almost reached the ceiling, and Darius Garland has a lot of potential, and playing with a dynamic guard like Jalen Green will definitely help him reach his ceiling. And at pick number four, the Toronto Raptors should select Jalen Suggs, guard out of Gonzaga. Jalen Suggs was a great playmaker in college and a capable three-point shooter. This pick is also for insurance when Kyle Lowry leaves the organization, the man that has been tenured there for such a long time. Another good dynamic guard in the backcourt will be great next to Fred Van Vliet. The media does overrate his potential, but he has all-star to all-NBA level potential. And at the fifth overall pick, the Orlando Magic should select guard out of Baylor, Davion Mitchell. Davion Mitchell just came off a national championship, and the Magic should take a risk. They need guard play, not another forward, and Davion shot 45% from three last season while also having two-way potential and showing a lot of promise on that end. And at pick number six, the Oklahoma City Thunder should select Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes is a very athletic forward with great length and height at six foot nine. He has no jump shot, but he's very young and the Thunder need forward play. Baisley is not gonna cut it. Scotty Barnes has a ceiling. The ceiling doesn't look the best, but we will see how it pans out in OKC. And at the seventh overall pick, the Golden State Warriors should select Moses Moody. They need bench production. Although they should trade this pick, Moody is a sharp shooter with two-way potential and has very good length. Now, like I said, with the seventh pick, the Golden State Warriors should definitely package that and try to bring in a veteran that will get them over the hump into contention. And at pick number eight, the Orlando Magic select forward Jonathan Kaminga. They draft for raw talent here. Kaminga is athletic and good defensively, but doesn't have much upside as a scorer. Shot 39% from the field and 25% from three in the G League bubble. He is overrated by scouts, but he will make up for Jonathan Isaac missed time. Jonathan Isaac is one of the most injury prone stars in the league. And at pick number nine, the Sacramento Kings select Keon Johnson, guard out of Tennessee. Sacramento right here drafts for potential, as they can potentially get another steal after drafting Tyrese Halliburton the year before. Keon Johnson is a two-way, extremely athletic player and can develop a jump shot considering he's only 18. And at pick number 10, the New Orleans Pelicans select Corey Kispert, forward out of Gonzaga. Corey Kispert is an elite shooter, improving every year he was in college and shot 44% from three last year 
with two-way potential and can be a 50-40-90 player. The reason why he's so low at 10 is because of age. He played all four years in college, but Zion needs wing shooting around him, and Kispert can do just that. And at pick number 11, the Charlotte Hornets should select center Kai Jones. Charlotte should take a risk here. They need a center, and Jones is one that can stretch the floor and is good defensively. They need to get rid of Cody Zeller and Bismack Biombo Minutes. A good vertical threat too. He can catch lobs. So he will fit with LaMelo Ball very well. And at pick number 12, the San Antonio Spurs should select forward Franz Wagner. Franz Wagner is 6'9", playing the small forward position. The Spurs should take a chance here. Franz played well in Michigan as a capable three-point shooter and solid passer with some all-star potential. He shot 83% from the free throw line, so it shows the shot is there as he can develop a shot with the Spurs. He's 19 and so he's very raw and he will be a project, but a 6'9 wing who has NBA level IQ, man that could take you the distance. And at pick number 13, the Indiana Pacers should select Chris Duarte. Indy needs backcourt production considering Oladipo left and Brogdon might get traded. He shot 42% from three this season and is a efficient high volume scorer averaging 17 points per game in college. And for the last pick of the lottery, at number 14, the Golden State Warriors should select Jalen Johnson. I'm very high on Johnson. He's very athletic and big, being 6'9", 220 pounds with great length and defense. He shot 44% from three this season, albeit on one attempt a game, but the potential of a jump shot is there. Golden State needs any bench production. A two-way finisher with a potentially deadly three-point shot can definitely be it. Now, thank you for watching the video, y'all. If you do like the video, make sure to leave a like. And yeah, we're growing right now. So make sure that if you're new to the fam, subscribe. Gave her back, they were boring and I do not be with that, be with that Smoking on this tree, I eat with the cat, with the cat It be around me cause I don't trust the soul, yeah